Hey, everyone, I'm sitting here with Kevin Ryan, who is like one of my favorite people. He's hilarious. He's one of the leads of the series, Harry Wild. You may also know him from Copper. Uh, he's an amazing actor and a friend and uh, a brilliant artist. We're excited to talk to you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I moved to LA not really knowing anybody. You know, I had no connections. And when you moved to LA, did you move directly from Ireland or did you, was there a stop along the way and did you have connections or were you kind of just like, here we go, buying a plane ticket? You're talking about like before the internet exploded with information. Yeah. You know, um, so it was only kind of basic. I was in Ireland and um, it was I was I was a dancer at that point and I oh, was I forgot with an agency and they were kind of like pushing me towards doing more commercial work and you know I kind of I was getting what bored. kind of dancer were you so I was doing hip hop on break oh, cool. and, oh he um, was in like, Mark was fucking, a dancer too that's so interesting nice I, I thought I was a dancer until I got to LA oh, and I was you like claim oh that? Okay. you guys are dancers <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I was yeah. Michael Jackson in the middle of uh, of the dance at high school like so I got some skills but Kevin uh, had yeah. a six pack he was Kevin had a six but he was like you know yeah really hip hop breaking that's, all that's the girls love very Kevin. intense they still do but <laughs> I don't say, what's changed? Know. <laughs> you know but um, was this around 2000 that would have been around then I think yeah but I made the decision that I wanted to take it was more studying acting that I wanted to take seriously. And um, there was very limited options in Ireland at that time. It was uh, the Gaiety School of Acting. Yeah, which I'm is familiar produced, with that. Yeah, it's yeah. produced some good artists, you know. Yeah. Um, or does London or New York or LA. Yeah. And sure. I didn't have anyone around, like, to advise me. I didn't know any actors. There was one actor that was down the road, Darren Healy, but he was working sort of in Ireland. Um, and I kind of, um, it was really speaking with my dad, you know, and kind of talking with him as to what the best direction. And then I tried L.A. kind of for a vacation, like after school and all of that. And I, I loved it out here. Like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, coming from Ireland out here, what's what's yeah. not to love? Um, and then it was before I left, it was like I did a ton of research on, on acting schools um, that I wanted to go and like audit and see who I gelled with. Um, and I think you were the first one I went into and that, it was just instant that I was like I like the way he teaches and there's no bullshit and it's right to the core like that's everything that I wanted you know because you, if, without training what is acting that's an insane question most people assume they know but they they don't really yeah they don't you know no it's, um, it's amazing you're right they assume they know that's the first do you know that's the first thing we do with all our our new students is just yeah. discuss define what you think acting is yeah and we get you know intelligent answers but it's not acting you know acting yeah. is telling a story acting is bringing my using my feelings and that's not acting it's yeah. well and i think that the general public tends to believe that acting is memorizing your lines and saying them in an interesting way for some actors, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Too many. <laughs> um, um, yeah, maybe I think. we should say. Well, maybe I should say here what acting yeah. is, so that you know, acting is creating life in the imaginary world of the script. There's many. There's other definitions too, but that's a pretty simple one. It's or, the one I live by. Yeah, yeah, living, living in the imaginary world of the script. Making it real and keeping it real. Those are the three that are simple. Making yeah. it real, keeping it real, living in the imaginary world of the script. But the idea of living is where it gets confusing. Yeah. People don't understand what that means. Yeah. I mean, the place, the magic place to get to right. is, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's when you're truly connected and you've done your character work and you're ready to go. I mean, that's being present, being you know, present. In, 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 in the scenes that you're shooting with character, with mm -hmm. all the technicalities that, you know, for me, I do all of the work way, way before I get to set so that I'm not reliant on, you know, learning lines or something as, as you know, technical as that. 
it's the emotional connection right, that right. I want to feel that you have that character down, but where is that character now in, in his life, in the script? You know what you're saying is exactly what Killian Murphy, Murphy she Kay just posted. I'm so glad you pronounced his name right. Uh-huh. Yeah, Killian Murphy just, yeah. uh, he said exactly that. And so it was very interesting to hear him say it because I don't think most people fully understand what he was even, because he said he does all the work, all the, he's exactly the same. Yeah. He spends all this time. And then he lets it all go and just gets in front of the camera and lives. Yeah. You're, well, you're free at that point. I mean, anything I ever shoot, I've, I've played out the scene every different way, like possible. I've, you know, I, I, I love to go running and I'll, you know, and that's just to get comfortable with lines and, mm-hmm. you know, get through that part of it. But then when you, I free myself up to the point that when I get on set, I'm, I, anybody can throw anything at me. Yeah. And I'm in the moment that yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking about anything else. Because it's too late to do the work when you're on set. It is impossible. You yeah. you will totally destroy your concentration, your relaxation by sitting there and going like, whoa, right. So my relationship backstory, <laughs> it, it's no, it's too late. Yep. It's too far. It's, it's, yeah. it's you're, you're too all, far Well, gone. you're sinking at that point. You know? You're yes. sinking. That's, that's right. That's, that's, that's that reset. Image. Yeah. You know, that's you right. You are sinking fast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Whoa. and I, we've all had those days as actors, and I think that's that's why I work harder. It's like they're the worst, worst days. Like yeah. where, you know, earlier on in my career, I've I had a few days like that where you think you're prepared, but then you get on set and you know something completely different happens mm-hmm. than how you've imagined the scene. Or they say we can't do this for location wise or something, so we're going to jump into this scene that you thought you were shooting in two weeks. You know, then if that work isn't done, you're you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, you, trouble, you you've yeah. got to you've got to paddle hard like on that one. Um, and sometimes, uh, if it's really too complicated, the actor. Uh, I was on Men in Black three, right, with Josh yeah. Brolin. Yeah, and yeah. Josh is a brilliant actor. Yeah. He really is wonderful. And they did just that. They said, "Oh, it's raining, and we so can't we shoot to, the thing that we anticipated right, shooting. So we want to go yeah. indoors." and shoot this scene because it's raining and he has his biggest monologue in the movie and he's getting his makeup on and right. and they said can you do would you can you do that for us he said well let me he didn't really have a chance you know he, he looked at it but he didn't really look at it because yeah. usually you look at it the night before and get it yeah, right and a, a movie yeah. that big you generally have a long period of time in terms of you know where that's going to fall in the shooting schedule. Yeah. So then to be like, oh no, actually we're going to shoot that today. <laughs> and he he's the lead with Will, you know, and and yeah. he looked at it and he spent ten minutes and he was and, and then he said, uh, not this one, no, I I can't do this one. No, we'll do it, in, you know, when it's supposed. I respect to that honesty yeah. as oh. well. I was thrilled that he said that because it's a great story of, and when he did do the monologue, it was great. You can yeah. see it in the film. Yeah, you know, and I think you 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 get to know your instrument. You get to know when you're ready for something, and and if I commit to doing this now, is that going to be something that you know is going to be collaborative on the best efforts and result orientated that the director and the whole team because. Look, what we do is a collaborative process. That's right. You know, to make the finished product on screen, it's it's really a miracle as to what goes on. Mm. You know, how many moving parts are within it. So all you can do is your job. A hundred percent effort into your job. Yes. And once you have that done, everything else like will fall into place. But you've got to find that comfort of and that confidence and you know, have a bit of respect for your own work as well and everyone else around you. If everyone else is working that hard and you show up underprepared, that's a fuck you, you know? It's an, it is. It's an insult. Yeah. And when you're on set as much as we are, you see it. It's like, what are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you couldn't do the work the day before? Yeah, and that's... Here's another thing as well. It's like scripts like Men in Black, they will have different color pages, you know, and yes, that, yeah. all the way up. So, like, you could shoot yourself in the foot by really learning your lines. But what you have is character. And also, 
there's another big aspect to this. It's when writers are writing for you, mm-hmm. for specifically you. That's right. Oh, you that's know? really amazing. What so you when we did, say, Copper or Harry Wilde right now is what the one I'm on, um, initially the first episodes or maybe the first season might be written already. So you're molding into that. Mm-hmm. But by the time, you know, season two comes around, they're writing for you. Yeah, they're tailoring it. Yeah. 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 And that makes life a lot easier. Yeah. You know. They have your voice. They do. In their mind. Yeah. Harry Wilde is such a fun show. Yeah. Uh, no, and, it is. and it is so different for you because it's a, it's a more subtle character emotionally. It's. You know what I mean? It's not yes. someone who's shooting. Well, sometimes you, I guess you shoot someone in, in Harry Wilde. <laughs> <laughs> Have you shot too many people? I don't remember if you... I've pulled a gun out, but I don't think I've, I've right. shot anyone. I don't anyone. think you shot. It's not that kind of a story. You know? yeah. It's so, more your mother driving you crazy. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, There's such a sweetness to that. Do you know what I mean? Like the the mother son relationship at the, at the center of that story is really... Yeah. Um, I love it. I think it's really charming, and I think that Jane is wonderful. And it's just, a, I think that the charm of the show, it kind of reminds me of Monk in some ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's its its interesting on that as well, because it's a lot of the stuff I've, I've been doing has been either period or characters that are in immense pain. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's exposed and that, you know, vul- I know the I've vulnerability seen. of those characters. So to do this, it's like... You know, you still have that. You still have all the same internal workings, but the material itself to go in and not feel like, you know, you've done 10 rounds with Tyson at the end of it is kind of (laughs) like refreshing as well. (laughs) Also, it's a great opportunity for everyone to see your charm. You're so charming, but in these other (laughs) films, you kill people. You're you're raging. and (laughs) Yeah, it is. And it's a charming show. And I'm lucky to be uh, teamed up with such a great cast and Mm -hmm. Jane Seymour is um phenomenal she's a great leader and you need that in um in any production you need a leader she's a producer on it too isn't she She is yeah yeah the energy always comes from the top yeah and when you have someone in a position that is there you know dedicating everything doing their job without bitching without like giving out and all of that stuff temper tantrums it's it it everyone just kind of comes together and yeah. gets through it like we yeah. we have the best time on set mm-hmm. you know but it always trickles from the top yeah yeah i'm sure you see that with will and, and j-lo and Com- completely it's, it's from them they're the star of the movie it comes from them then yeah. the director is you know there as well but it's the star that yeah I and think generally they produce yeah you know so it it's why i work with them it's better yeah they really care on a level that most people don't understand from the script to the director to the costumes yeah. to making sure everyone gets good food i know it sounds crazy but uh it's such a big thing for many of them they just want to make sure everyone gets good food mm-hmm. well, that's a big thing <clears throat> you know so you're not crews Ireland. get pissed yes, when they they're do. not they fed really properly yes, yes. Really you're right. right that's so true and like here's the here's the thing in ireland yeah. sorry with catering yes is that it's so small <gasps> that there's only a handful of companies. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. you know, if they're not good in Ireland, it pisses people off. Um, so the level has really stepped up. Mm-hmm. And especially with interna- international productions coming in as well, it's like they've got to reach, they had to like step up to the international level, which they've done. And we have a thriving industry in Ireland now, mm-hmm. you know. But it's, yeah, no, always feed your crew. Mm-hmm. Feed them well. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the lesson here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're 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 recording this now during the strike and you have your strike t-shirt should he uh <coughs> Yeah. I will. Oh, to that one. Yeah. 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 And I just think it's wonderful that we are uh conscious of this and making other people conscious of this because we've even had discussions and I've been around a long time, a lot of strikes. Yeah. And some people don't understand why we strike. We strike for health care. They don't understand that there's you don't get health care unless you strike for health care. Yeah. You know? And foreign countries which don't have strong unions, India, Korea, 
South Korea, Philippines, they have thriving, thriving film industries. The actors don't make anything. Did you, were you aware of how bad it was? Not on that side, no, no. Terrible, terrible. Only the star actors, but it, the rest, no health care, no protections, nothing. It's but that's look, that's why this is going on yeah. right now. It's unless you're making, you know, a certain amount in the industry to provide for your family and all that, and that's consistent, you know, you're gonna deal with that. And that's in, in the US. And I've seen the difference, I mean, in in the last twenty years. We all have. I mean, um, it used to be lucrative. That's right. You know, but that yeah. hasn't changed at all. So it's even per diem 20 years ago was $60. Yeah. Guess what? It's, no inflation. It's still $60 yeah, today. Yeah, nothing has changed. You know? that, that's, I, know. Um, I think people don't understand that this is not a strike for the, you know, the, the major the series stars. regulars, the yeah. stars. It is not about that. It's about... Yeah the actors who are, you know, the three guest star episodes a year, that, you know, that yeah. they're like, they're working, they're making money, but they cannot survive on this. And yet they're expected to be auditioning all the time. And therefore it's very difficult to have a career outside of the industry and to still survive. Yeah, these it's strikes, not about the stars, that's right. it is these, not. Yeah, but and the I, stars I, are backing it. That's well, well, they have, have to, to. and and the, here's the other they issue. They want to because well, they were also starting in the beginning. Yeah, with nothing. that's that's yeah. what I was going to say. Everyone yeah. starts from somewhere, okay? Yes. Right. So you get to this place where you are the star, and you have to think of the generation below you, and what's going to happen to the actors? Because if the actors that are going to be the stars don't have the necessary platform and yeah. means to develop their career, to develop their craft and end up in that position, you're going to lose the quality of talent as well. Yes. It's, it's when you take so much of the entertainment out of the entertainment industry and you're just left with the business of it, that's fucking boring. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and, you, and you lose sight of, you lose sight of talent. And that's something that we have to protect. I mean, the AI aspect, you know, that we're all kind of aware of now with this is a whole different aspect. Um, you know, and it's, companies that are I'm not going to say who but it's like you know pay an extra $350 and feed them a ham sandwich and uh, we get to use your image for life I know like, it's ridiculous it's, sorry it's but embarrassing. That's, that, yeah. that's that's ridiculous is, is, is putting it yeah. very politely very politely you know? I know I, 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 it's so ridiculous you know but the health insurance aspect of the strike horrible it's, you know um, say for instance I worked outside of uh, the US like outside of SAG Guess what? I give up my health insurance. Wow! I, I know. So when now I, I got to go in and, and know. get you know whatever's going on from private, from, private health insurance. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I was. It's horrible. But yeah, that's throughout the whole world. They don't. They don't have. Well, some of the countries have health insurance. So you have France and England. Yeah. Have a national Canada. health insurance. Yeah. Right. Health national insurance, health insurance. Right. So that's we don't have that. But that's like that's related with the union. I think that something has to change because. It's like the threshold of whatever you have to make, right? You know, to get past that. Now, if you come just in under that, you don't get health insurance either. But meanwhile, you That's still right. have to pay your dues. Yeah, you That's still have right. to do everything else. Mm -hmm. But it's like I think there should be, you know, at least one yearly checkup. You know, you're allowed certain I discounts or something like that to totally. help the union members. And I know SAG is in, and I I know SAG are, is in a position where they have X amount of members, but only five percent or something like that are actual right. actual working actors. But when there's something to that, you know, where there is. where where that five percent, even if they're not making a threshold, it's like they they still have to they Help should out. still should be taken care of, yeah. Also, no one looks at how many years it took us because both Kay and I were actors to yeah. become actors. It's a a decade, yeah, <laughs> before you can even yeah. start to make a living some mostly yeah you're studying yeah. in high school you're studying in college maybe you go to grad school maybe you don't maybe you you're in private classes coaching. private right. coaching there's there's a long period of time where you are just in training for most people and then when you think you have it you're like 
five years later, you're like, I, I didn't know shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's like every five years, it's like, oh my God. But I think that's the gift that, that's the cool thing about this uh, art form is that each successive year of experience, you learn more about yourself and therefore you get deeper and deeper into what it means to live. You know, Aaron defined acting, you know, creating life in the imaginary world of the script. Well, then you've got to examine yeah. life. And you've got to examine it closely, not just your life, but other people's lives. But we're striking for the young people. That's really, you know, you've already started at least to really have a career leading roles. And it's how many, what, a decade, 15 years? 15, I'd say, 15, yeah. 15, yeah. yeah. And when you came in, all those years you put in dance and then acting, years. Yeah. And yeah. you worked so hard. You know, wasn't that it wasn't fun? No, no, we had good times, but no, I mean, I literally just lived, breathed, slept. Yeah, like everything I did was was because I I wanted that for a career. Mm -hmm. You know, you I wanted to so be an dead. actor, and nobody was getting in my fucking way. You, I know. Like when I met you, I was so committed. You yeah. had just yeah. done Copper. I think maybe you were in the, the first season, and you were on hiatus. And Aaron said to me at the time, like. Kevin has done this on his own, meaning nobody ever does it on their own, but he, you had done yeah. short films, you had done projects, you had He, he been, didn't have a lot of mentors. I was pretty much you were, the yeah. mentor, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And then my dad was always supportive, of you know? Oh, yeah. that was but lucky. Yeah, it was, it was really a very isolated journey looking back. But I never saw that because it's like, you know, why do horse races have blinders on it? Like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't pay any attention to the person running beside you. No, you were, you you were know? great. You, yeah. Grit, you listened, determination. Because I kept telling you, you can do this, Kevin. You, yeah. can, you, you can do this. The accent will be a benefit. Yeah. And if you can learn to do an American one, great. English mm. one, whatever. But it's not going to be a negative thing, you know? Yeah. And then Kevin's road to getting work was unique because he produced his own short. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't happening. I what think, well, five, and it, and seven it, years or so that you would... It was a while. I don't think it was that, excuse me, that long, but it was initially, it was um, to help, uh, from what I can remember, it was to help build a reel. Yeah. Right. And we wanted the US accent. So you put me on with um, Erica Schaefer, who oh, uh, yeah. was an amazing dialect coach. Uh -huh. I was working with her constantly. Um, so we said we would shoot this and then there was enough scenes that we nearly had a short. So we got the guys together again and, and made this, you know, 10 minute short mm -hmm. that, you know, wasn't very good um, in the sense of the script and story, but the scenes were good enough to get me rep. And yeah. it went into a festival and there was a manager from the UK that just wanted to sign me on the spot. Um, mm -hmm. From that, I did Raw which was a TV series in Ireland. Four mm -hmm. episodes. Yeah, and then I did um, Songs for Amy, which was an independent movie oh. with John McGuire. Um, and then while we were shooting that, um, there was parts of that that we, we were shooting in New York. And um, I remember we were out in like, we were shooting in Times Square, which was like Mad. it won off the won off the checklist. Yeah, you know, like that's, that's really one of the locations. Cool. Every yeah. actor's like, "Can we get to shoot in Times Square? <laughs> pyramids, you know? <laughs> no, it is. Yeah. It's really cool. Well, like, that's like there's yeah. a wish list, you know. No, I, and, I know. and whether the actors pyramids. talk about, it, I think every actor has a wish list of locations. Yeah, Paris at some point. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. But Times Square for me was one of them. And then um, we had a break for maybe two hours in the day, three hours maybe, and um, I had this. Uh, I, ha I, I think it was a callback at that point. Um, maybe it was the first meeting, but they wanted me in the room. So it was with Alexa Fogel who was casting. So I said to, the, to I asked the producer, um, I was like, look, I have this thing. Um, can I go in and uh, audition for it? And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I, was uh, like, no. I was like, okay, I'm going to be bold and disrespectful and go do this thing. No, I'm going to go above her head. So I went, Yo, I went to the, great. went to the director. Yeah. Um, and sometimes look, and if he says no, you just can't go. That's yeah. it. But you know, I got on really well with him and I, I think there's sometimes 
the directors are more artist artist driven and and also it's they they work more gig to gig so they understand for an actor an, opp- mm-hmm. an audition is an opportunity and so anyway he was like yeah cool just go <laughs> you know so i'm like i was <laughs> i was playing this like pop star that had like makeup on and the scene was on like that we were shooting prior was like you know these flowy outfit like oh, um, love and it was just like a bit of a piss take it was a comedy um, <laughs> so I had to like take off all this eyeliner off and everything and then like you know I'm going into 1864 okay yeah so um, they gave me a guy to um, escort me through the subway and, and get there because I didn't know New York at the time at all <laughs> and um, they gave you a guy that's amazing they gave me a guy yeah. 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 they didn't want you to get lost yeah and, yeah. And, no, yeah no they, yeah. To no, it, no it was to get lost it was like we need you like <laughs> to come back, back. Yeah, yes, yeah that's yeah. what yeah. I'm saying no, I in other words I, my idea is funnier though that they were attacked <laughs> yeah, on in the me. subway <laughs> people were it is possible <laughs> yeah. so they heavy. wanted you to be there and then back immediately that's what it was that's what it was right that's what it was um, so I got um, onto the train and then I was asking the guy that they gave me, I was like, hey, could you read lines with me? So we start looking at the lines and I'm like, I, I can't say any of these lines. You know, it's 1864, but it was language, especially with the gentleman that I was with, that I just did not feel comfortable saying, um, especially on a train in New York. So I kind of was just like, OK, and we would say, um, OK, so you're going to, you know, make a noise. <laughs> so I, I couldn't say the lines. Got there, got in the room. There was like 20 people sitting there. I sit down and, um, you know, I'm like, join, join the wait. I'm like, they're not going to like this. Alexa comes running out and she's like, Kevin Ryan, in. Yeah. And I'm like, in? I said, all, all these guys were here before me. She's like, your production's been on already. You have to get back <laughs> to set. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah, so I went in the room, one take of each scene. I think it was two scenes maybe, um, possibly three. But I think it was two. Very quick. Done. Thank you. Out. And I'm going, yeah. fuck, that, that, that didn't go well. Like, <laughs> anyway, I go finish the film and um, we get a call. Uh, I think we went back to Ireland to actually finish the production. And my manager then got a call. This is the new manager from the, that I got from the short. She gets a call saying that they want to see me in L.A., that um, Tom Fontana and Barry Levinson all want to meet me in L.A. So I go in to the Standard Hotel. They had one yeah. of those like boardrooms and I'm like outside. up on sunset. Yeah. So I'm getting mic'd up and I'm like, shit, this is the real deal. They're oh, they, they wanted you to do like a screen test. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I went in there and I gave it. I gave the performance, you know, I just gave it and um, it felt great. And, you know, you always want to see what that reaction is. But Tom Fontana got up and gave me like he just started smiling and gave me the biggest hug, just the longest, most beautiful hug. And um said you know see you later still doesn't mean you have the gig yeah but like i remember telling my manager that that was the reaction of tom fontana and um she was like okay it's looking good and then they came in with an offer and all of that so that was really you know a pivotal point in my career can you see copper at all is it still on on anywhere or they don't air it yeah i think amc it's on now amc yeah it was one i loved it yeah, a lot I of really people did. It. You know, it's a shame it didn't go on longer. Yeah. I think it was just a few years too early. Yeah, but oh, it was I agree. really It was one of those things quality. that, like, had it been a few years later on streaming, people would have been like, yeah. oh, have you seen Copper? It's an amazing series. It's one of those, like, there's just periods of time where the series came out at the wrong moment, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. different, that, that happens all the time. So well acted, beautiful to look at. It really... Felt it was beautiful. like you were in that time in the 1800s, which is hard to make real. Yeah, I mean those sets that they built, the studio was just phenomenal. Streets, every detail. You go into any shop, it's fully decked out. Like wow, they had a farm on set. They had oh, you know yeah. horses, pigs, like goats. Every everything was on set. You could smell the manure in the studio, in the mud on the streets. That's great. Like it was, it was just everything we wanted was there. You know, and they supported us in such a way, like. You know, even the wardrobe department, they they were so involved. As actors, we were so involved in the aesthetic mm-hmm. look. Like, and I still have all the original drawings of um, of McGuire, you oh. know, mm-hmm. of what it would look, what, what shape he was taking. Um, but we were just treated so well. Like, even we wanted to stay fit. Like, we asked Tom, could we, we put a gym in the studio? Yep, yeah, cool, take that space. There's a thing, we get all the gear, the drivers are picking it up. 
like just a support system. Um, and then I've met some beautiful people that are that I'm very, very close with right now, you know, yeah. that you can call friends. Yeah. So the blinders that you were talking about that you were that you're going to do it, you're going to do it. In the beginning, you have to have that. You have to have that for years, not for one year, two yeah. years, because even after you break through, when you broke through, you still were barely making a living. Copper yeah. was the first one probably that you... First really, decent, <coughs> proper, yes, that de you could, proper paycheck. Right, proper yeah. paycheck, making a living, you know. And that was 10 years, I bet you. Yeah. Well, but uh, before that, and I think to be a dancer takes a tremendous amount of discipline. And I think it, that stood by me for not just only training as an actor, but my survival. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, I, I didn't, I never questioned. A lot of people go through like, you know, is this going to work out? Is this going to, I didn't have any of that. Yeah. Like, um, that's how, that's <laughs> how, how shut off I was. <laughs> yeah. They're, you know, is it raining? Is it a fucking thunderstorm? <laughs> I don't know. Discipline, I know. Self-discipline is really, because yeah. you don't have a lot of people disciplining you. It's not like you have a trainer who's then saying, hey, let's go work out and stuff. Yeah. No, it's your own self-discipline. Yeah. And, and I was over here, so I didn't even have family going yeah. like, hey, you're out of line. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't be doing that. But no, it was very good. I, I, you know, I did whatever work I had to do to survive. And then it was the gym, both gyms, because the yeah. acting school is a gym. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, um, and then physically, you know, mm -hmm. so like, for me, my my physical is my mental. You know, if I'm like working out a lot, if I'm hiking, if I if I feel like at my best, then I'm in my best place to intake. You know, study and intake anything really. You know, emotionally, your work is always very powerful. You know, uh, to get did you always have that from the beginning, or does did that? Because as a man, yeah. you, you know, our emotions aren't always. Uh, welcome in life and yet you started to bring emotions to your work more and more and more copper was yeah. spectacular that bridge scene i think i think for me it's a very trusting space you know um it's a very trusting space when you're when you're on a production and you feel that support but you're also playing a different character so even though you're, you are, you're pulling from your own mm -hmm. personal pain, you know, that you allow yourself that vulnerability. I think, look, I, I studied with you for years and you made me feel safe and you, you brought me to a place that allowed me to trust my own emotions and embrace my own emotions. And like, I'm getting even emotional talking about that because it's, um, to really connect and bring the stuff that we have a really fucked up job as actors because everything that it, pay, all the pain that happens in your life, right? We're taught to bury that, yeah. move on, right? You Don't know. focus on it. Just exactly. Literally move towards your goal without that even yeah. in your awareness. Yeah, and we're taught. You know, that's what we're taught. And then, because what what I see with with great actors is they don't consciously do emotions. They live in the thing, and then just like you said, you were starting to feel things right here. Yeah. It wasn't planned. It wasn't like no. in the script. And yeah. that's the confusion. So many people, even actors themselves, think, oh, they score it like music. Scoring it means you, you put notation in the music. Oh, and yeah. over here, I'm going to feel this. Yeah. And over here... and. No, no, that's not how it Do works. Do I wake up and I say like, okay, so I have to go to the gym today. I have to go to work. I'm going to feel happy at work. I'm going to, you know, yes. it's not. It's, that's ridiculous. It's not, you know, that's, that's I, uh, what you taught us years ago. Acting is bad acting. Living is great acting. Ah, mm -hmm. you know? Ooh, that's good. And, and that's something that I really believe, you know, and I strive for in my work. Um, but yeah, I, back to what we were saying, it was like, you gave me the permission to explore that. And once I found that, I was able to bring that to my work. Um, I, 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 I lost any like inhibitions. 
you know. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's a special place when oh. you get there and you're not in your head and you're not feeling insecure. Shit, am I going to expose too much of myself here? You know, am I going to look fucked up because I, I had a shitty childhood that no one knows about mm -hmm. and I don't want to show that pain? It's like you you own that shit. When you, when you get to a place where, where um, you can access that comfortably and confidently, oh, you're, you're in a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's when you'll work. Yeah. And it's film, yeah. so you always got another take. That's that's you, it. You got another yeah. one and another one, and you can, if you need, you can ask for another one. Most of the times, they'll give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. People don't seem to realize that if you cannot have a, an open or vulnerable emotional life in your own life, it doesn't magically just manifest itself in your acting. It's like there is yeah. no separation. People are like, oh, well, in my own life, I will not express yeah. my emotions, but <laughs> in my acting, I will suddenly be highly emotional. Yeah. It I doesn't work that way. I remember way. we were working in class on, I just remember certain things about yeah. everyone's work. I don't know why it sticks there. Yeah. And we were working on you letting go uh, in your rage, in just, having no care just goes there let it go and you yeah. you working on uh the the mike nichols uh feature oh, the, um the boys closer I don't what's know. it mike nichols N no it, that it, is closer it, yeah it was the one with the guy with the drug addict yeah uh, casting yeah. directors oh yeah. really burly 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 yeah yeah yeah, burly. yeah yeah and i said you know this because we didn't have to worry about the scene so much, you know? Yeah. This was just about, and I said, Kevin, don't fuck the scene. Don't worry about the scene. There's yeah. acting class. No one's going to see it, you know? Just let it go and let it, <laughs> let it rip. <laughs> Do you remember? You just, yeah, yeah. You had yeah. so I much think you, fun. Um, uh, a lot of fun, and, you know, you get to explore that. That's great permission to yeah. do that. I can do whatever yeah. the fuck I want. And, you, whatever. You, you, know. you just let it go. And yeah. It was, you were hilarious. It's a great exercise. Yeah. yeah. And therapeutic as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should all do that on a weekly basis. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they have rage rooms now as well? <laughs> they, like, do, they, they do. They yeah. do. Yeah, that's funny. And that gave you a whole lot of freedom. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, you can just go there any time. Yeah. The it, it was so much. But people who didn't know you, we had auditors at that time. People who were auditing, and they thought he psycho. Was, <laughs> <laughs> he was that crazy, crazy motherfucker. Yeah, and they yeah, thought yeah. like, what does this have to do with the scene? You know, yeah. well, nothing. We're, we're an acting class. We're yeah. learning things. You know? Well, that's actually why we stopped having auditors at the studio unless you're actually in class because yeah. how can you possibly interpret what is happening in a class unless you have a vocabulary and you have skin in the game? Right. You know, it's like um, I remember I was in a writing lab for a long time and I always felt that people who weren't actively writing would give notes that weren't as useful or vulnerable because they weren't putting anything into the group as well. Yeah. You got to have skin in the game. And so somebody just showing up to watch an acting class is like, well, what's that? I don't know if that's any good. Well, until you are faced with it. It's that old thing of Teddy Roosevelt, you know, the critic, the yeah. critic versus the man in the ring. Right. Like, oh, unless that's a you great have. Quote. Yeah, we that should, is, yeah. We yeah, unless you're in, in the, the ring, yeah. you cannot ever know what it is to do that. Yeah, until someone punches you in the mouth, it's easy to say, yeah, no, just, you know, hit them, you know, and yeah. block it. You know, well, no, you're going to get punched in the mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll be in the present then. <laughs> oh, yes, you will be. Smack you into the present. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And then are you going to do a third season of Harry Wild? Um, they're releasing the third season. Yeah, we just shot. So um, they they combined season two and three together right, right. on mm -hmm. the schedule. So um, if we go again, it would be for season four. Right? Oh, that's great. So we'll see. I just, you know... So many shows now are just so crazy, violent, and so everyone's committing suicide and dying. And world's a dark place. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why I like. There are not a lot of shows that are clever. This is why it's, I find it delightful. You know, it, yeah. it's it's a different kind of thing, which is we need more of. I think. Yeah. You know. I think. I think the structure of the industry has changed a lot over the years in a sense of um, 
when it comes to networks and streaming platforms that it's like there's a lot of executives that are having to oversee creative decisions and yeah. you know there you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen to get yeah. these things going you know yeah and there's so much content being produced that it's hard to get really right and you and and the the guys that are more contained like david e kelly um you know sheridan and yeah you know they're they're able to have their own sort yeah. of their own camp autonomy and it works. Yeah. what's her name yeah. also uh shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes. Yeah. yeah yeah uh it it works yeah they don't hit a home run all the time but such high quality of everything that they yeah do. tyler perry you know what he does he has his own right. style formula and it mm -hmm. and it works you that's know? right that's right and i think that's important and I think a lot of shows that are coming out now, it's like, oh, we'll try them out, you know. And now pilots, pilots aren't the same as it was either. No. So before they used to, you know, make a ton of pilots each year. And they wouldn't even be released. I yeah. Know. They would just see. Now, now it's just going on TV. It's just going on streaming platforms. Immediate. And yeah. if the numbers and aren't there, the then they the entire season. Exactly. Rather yeah. than going like, oh, the pilot, and then maybe reshooting the pilot or, or fine-tuning. Because how many yeah. pilots did you watch that uh, I remember being like, well, that's not a great show. But then yeah. past the pilot, they figure things out. They really, like, there's such a process of collaboration that happens past that first episode. But if you yeah. don't really have a sense of what that is, there's no audience for it. I don't know how you figure yeah. that out. It's much harder. I, I remember say. there was a show that came out and I was living with a friend of mine who was a very, very successful actor. And he got an offer on, um, I think it was season two of this show. And um, he was like, come on, we sit down, we watch the thing or whatever. So we watched the first episode and we're kind of like, eh, eh. And he's like, yeah, no, fuck this. You know what I mean? I'll just turn them down or whatever. Um, and I, then I was like, let me let me watch a few more. So I watched up to episode three, and I was like, this is pretty good. Are you sure? <laughs> you know, you yeah, don't want to do this. you might want to keep watching. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, no, 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 fuck that. And uh, I was like, okay, whatever. Anyway, the show was Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> you know, uh, one of my favorites. So, it's a great yeah. show. And they wanted, they wanted to originally go mm -hmm. in a direction with that show that instead of going down to Mexico and involving Europeans, they wanted to go to Ireland with that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, Such a different yeah. direction. Yeah, the, the pilot was all like greenery, right? Like it was all grass and like it was, uh, it was no, not. The, no, the pilot was no, in the No, no, the, uh, the pilot script. Oh, oh the script. I've read the script. script. It was, yeah, it wasn't in the desert, but then I think. Yeah, in his underwear. Well, yeah. yeah. What, uh, who was the creator again? It was um, uh, Vince Milligan. Yeah. Vince Milligan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he's second generation Ir Ir yeah. Irish. Oh. So he wanted to bring the show to Ireland. Mm -hmm. So he he wanted that. I remember talking to him one time, um, and this was during the the height of Breaking Bad success, you know, and and he was saying that that's all he wanted. So he wanted to go like the IRA route and like mm -hmm. you know go right down with the, dr with, the, with drugs coming into Ireland and being supplied and all of this stuff, and. When he didn't get my friend, he changed the direction of his show because he's the only person he wanted to do that. The That's Irish like, part. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is fascinating. Yeah. I'm rewatching it right now. I'm actually. That's the story the I, was, I was told anyway. <clears throat> Could, you know, you never yeah. know. It's very good. Jerry it's Seinfeld, terrible. the sign show Seinfeld, when you watch the pilot, it's not that good. I mean, it, it grows. Yeah. That thing, they really. It really creates yeah. its own energy as it continues to develop the co the charisma the between the relationships. relationships. Yeah. Well, but that's back to what we said earlier when yeah. it's a case of, you know, they have to write this pilot to get it approved. Right. Then they cast it, you know, mm -hmm. so that first episode is the cast finding who 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 are we? Yes. yes. And who are you in the relationships? And then once that starts gelling, then it's really that's true. That's where you see get, people get replaced as well. Yes. Oh, they do. Yes. It's like I think the biggest you know uh, story of that was Back to the Future. You know. Oh, I know. Yeah. That was some crazy recasting going on there. Yeah, but they recast shows all the time too. They'll do a pilot yeah. and then they'll reshoot the pilot with the different actors. It's it's. I think it's actually. I mean, I think it's brutal because of course nobody wants to get fired from a TV show. But yeah. It can really change the chemistry of a cast. Sometimes for it's the a better. good thing. You yeah. never know. Right. Sometimes it's a really good thing. Back it, to the future. Yeah, it depends what the reasoning is. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've seen it, um, excuse me, I've seen it been done where it's uh, for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And and that 
that pissed a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to get rid of Pacino. That's a very famous, known, yeah. you know, I know on The Godfather. Yeah, well, not even first... to get in. They didn't even want him reading. Yeah, <laughs> right. So it was before he even got yeah. in the door. Like, but then no when way, he got no in, and they shot. Yeah, and they they said, "Oh, he's terrible. We got to get rid of him." And, and <laughs> no, really, they, no. Yeah. and Paramount and and the. The main guy at Paramount loved him, and he said no. And then uh, uh, the director, uh, Coppola, said that if he goes, I go. And yeah. that was the end of that. And that was their Jack and Rose moment. That's yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> you go, I go, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> or jump, was it? <laughs> yes, you jump, you, right, you right. jump, I jump. You jump, I jump, Jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so angry about that movie they kept saying that she should have led him on to the, the door and I watched look I was in 8th grade when that movie came out it was my yeah. primary way of releasing my emotions at the time <laughs> there were no other options so uh, <laughs> I would sit in that movie and watch Titanic and I was like guys clearly when he gets onto the door it sinks that's why she can't let him on yep. they will both go down and everybody's like there was room and i'm like it's not about the room <laughs> have you seen it's the about... documentary no. no they made a whole documentary oh about, that's so funny like with james cameron <laughs> w w you know because so many fans were coming and different people saying yes. no he could have fit on the door he could have lived it's not about space. so they, they recreated <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> oh i gotta watch it's this. out i gotta watch it's out. it yeah that's yeah so they recreated so the whole funny. thing funny oh i'm, I'm looking for funny oh, yeah that's so, so it was, funny it was, it was cool but they um it's funny i went through down this rabbit hole recently with the titanic and the whole conspiracy what conspiracy so there's know. a whole big conspiracy and i watched this older documentary recently i'm gonna send it to you because it's okay. like mm -hmm. it's it's i i like this stuff i, li I like you yeah. know conspiracies but the so here's the conspiracy the titanic that sailed and sank wasn't the titanic it was the olympic <laughs> Right. Uh, okay. There's so much evidence <laughs> about this. It's insane. And uh -huh. what happened to the Titanic? Titanic was sailing for another 20 years. They oh, they and they switched, just renamed they, the they, ships. They switched names. Oh. They switched um, ships. Oh, I love, I love conspiracies. You know? Yeah, you could, you can never prove them. So, uh, I mean, the biggest one was like, so the letters they said they. They they re and there was all stuff with insurance as well. Like a week right. before it sailed, yeah, 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 they yeah. instead of two and a half million, it was twelve and a half million. Um, there was like the windows on the ship, so there was like three extra windows on the Titanic. Then they were the same, except these like three extra windows. Mm -hmm. And the footage sailing out was there. We, these windows weren't there. Uh -huh. You know, there was all of this stuff. But they went down and and just from the deteriorating deterioration of the ship, two of the letters on the back of the ship have come off that were riveted on mm -hmm. and underneath you can see like the m and the p <laughs> that are that were painted on wow. you know? and there's nothing about aliens in it though you know, aliens, you know, no. i mean yeah. aliens always sooner or later come in and jews probably sunk it <laughs> <laughs> they did it for the insurance <laughs> Let's wow, that's, that's some, that could be the world's greatest insurance scam. Banking industry, mm. you know. Yeah, doomed. I love, I love doomed. that, you know. <laughs> no, I love a good conspiracy, but yeah, I'll send you the doc. It's, yeah, it's would, very funny. I'll, I'll it's really it. interesting. Yeah. I like that. Anything that you'd like to talk about that it's on, you know, about? I think, like, I, I want to ask you guys some questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how are you guys seeing the, with the changes in the industry, right? I mean, with the streaming thing that came in pretty much like what twelve years ago, yeah. thirteen years ago, with, with with acting and how has that changed the perception, insight into actors wanting to be actors? You know, like I, I wanted to be an actor from like when I was a kid doing drama school and all of that. And if you wanted to watch a movie, you had to go to the store and get it and all of that. So everyone's get. Do you see more? People wanted to be actors and they try it and dabble in it now? Or I is think it more. Like yeah, I think there are more people now that want to be actors because there is so much content. I mean, if you really go back, yeah. you used to, to be an actor, you'd have, you'd see movies. And the television shows had pretty much bad acting, you know, goofy, you know, going into the 50s and 60s and 70s. Television was not great. Yeah. They, called it, they called it the boob tube, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. So it seemed very a way to, to become an actor. A lot wanted to become more theater at that. People wanted to do more theater. 
Yeah. You know, the theater now, no, it's it's not as they don't come in wanting to do theater anymore. Yeah. You know, now they want it's so accessible with good acting too yeah. because of the streaming. And the fact that everybody has a camera in their pocket and you know the, the right. advent of people making their own sketches on uh, on their phones. I think that has in my opinion, it feels a little bit sometimes like there's a lot more people playing the lottery. Yeah. So it feels like there's a lot more people involved, but I would say the same percentage is interested in learning about acting. I agree exactly. In other words, the amount of people that really want to be great actors or competent actors yeah. is the same. Percentage Because they don't want to put the time in. Right. Mm. They see they can go on camera on YouTube and say, oh, I look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I can act. Yeah. And some people do get acting from that, but that's like hitting the lottery. Yeah. No, acting is a real craft, and that number is the same. The people who are really serious, because the rest, they're not serious. They, they, I call them jokers, you know. But I yeah. think because of the greater opportunities, this is a little bit of a gold rush sensation. Yeah. There's a fever of that, and maybe this is the moment where that bubble sort of bursts. I don't know. Well, people can get in now easier mm -hmm. because of their, you, you, you get cat, you know, you're a drug addict in the show and you say, well, look, I'm a drug addict. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just, you know, I sell drugs. I'll just tell them and they go, yeah, he does look like a drug addict. And <laughs> well, what's well, interesting, sorry, and, you go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, it will <clears throat> also on your phone, it's with algorithms and what shows yeah. up. It's like you're talking about castings or anything it's yeah. open casting calls yeah, yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, i can audition for this yeah. that was never there you had to really search for auditions you oh, had to yeah. get by and stage you had and go to be in and la right. or new york and now you can be in ohio and you can audition for things which is interesting because you know i've had some clients you know private coaching clients that are in other places yeah. being like i'm taping from you know where i'm living with family or or it's just the place that i want to live but what they're discovering is it's wonderful because it's peaceful and it's less expensive, but they're not connected to a larger community of artists. And I think they're yeah. suffering because of that. And you want a career. You can get a show or you can get an episode or you can get a feature, you can get that. But we look up all their, we look up and say, what else have they got in the last five years? Yeah. And then you see they haven't gotten anything, mm -hmm. that they had one thing. And then they're they're bitter and angry because they don't understand why they can't get more. And the reason they can't get more because they don't know how to act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm all about I I'm all about the five year sort of span of time. I, I, for me, it's something I look at every five years. Mm -hmm. and, right. and also back to what you were saying earlier um, about the changes and all of that. It's with yourself, with your work, I mean, mm -hmm. and but there's there's another thing that we we do, we evolve. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, oh, right? Yeah. Like Kevin at twenty five is not Kevin at thirty five. Oh, yeah. Forty. You know, it's 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 different, and with that, society changes. Mm -hmm. So you you are adapting not just to these changes within yourself and what's there, but then all of that writing changes. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. if it's done in that present day, mm -hmm. and even if it's not done in that present day, it still changes on what the temperament of society is. Yeah. So it's with all these movements that are going on mm -hmm. and equality and all of these wonderful yeah. changes Black Lives in Matter our society. And yes. All of yeah. the different yeah. They're gonna be brought in to a period script set in the sixteen hundreds. Yeah. That's right. The same ideology. Yeah. When we do what we do and when we do it really well, it's impossible to see. It's invisible. Yeah. So when people see it they see, well, he's doing nothing. She's doing, uh, Clint Eastwood even talks about that. And he, he says, you know, people think that I'm really doing nothing when I act. He yeah. says, that's not true. He said, I've done a lot of work for that close-up. That's what yeah. he says, yeah. He knows it's in the close-up. He says it, and he says, when, when I'm in the close-up, I, I am full, he said. Now, that's an amazing thing for him to say. You never think of him in that way. He's a great artist, of course, as a director, mm -hmm. and, but he's worked in acting for 60 years. Yeah. You know, 
And that's what people don't understand because it looks so easy. Well, that's when, um, you know, I know we were talking about analogies of sports and all recently, but, yeah. you know, when you watch a golfer, Tiger Woods hit a swing, he makes yeah. it look so easy. Oh, my God. You know, and, and that's when you know someone's good. And, yeah. and I think, like, it's the same thing with acting. And that's a great thing to give people inspiration to want to try it as well. Or singing is the same, you know, mm -hmm. any art yeah. form, like painting, whatever it is, that self-expression. But you're right, it's, it's when an actor is in that sweet spot and it looks like they're doing nothing. Yeah. It's because they've done everything. That's right. <laughs> and it, it's not <laughs> the preparation. Some people can get lucky because of a role, you know, one role and they just are themselves. Right. And they, they were born to be that they role get they have. Cast yeah. and that happens on that role. But to make a career, oh, you better be ready. Yeah. You better have something to offer. Like you said earlier, you better have something to offer. And, and that's that five-year period. Right. Like if, even if you look at like people that hit the A-list, they have a five-year window. Mm -hmm. And they're still around. They'll still get, you know, they'll still get, um, you know, they're still, uh, their points are still there for marketing. They'll still get movies funded. But that's sweet spot, you know. And if you can sustain that, someone like Will Smith, Tom Cruise is the biggest example. Here. Absolutely. He's Amazing. A he has just never rested wow. on his laurels. He's never been like, I'm going to just take a break. He's like always pressing for the next. Yeah. But he loves it. I Have know. you ever heard yeah. of him? Oh, yeah. He is very he passionate. I know. He loves it. Oh, he's a perfect example of like, find something you love and yeah. you'll never work a day in your life. That guy's a machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what he did as well with them. Um, just the promotions of the latest Mission Impossible was genius. Yeah. With a strike coming in, he started promoting that three months before the movie oh, trailers know. even started coming out. Know. You know, because it was, there, nobody's promoting he re movies. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know, he realized. So he realized that and he knew that. And he put every piece of himself into those promotions mm -hmm. so that when the strike hit, it was already done. He's an amazing artist. He's incredible. And he's incredible. He's in charge of, do you know, all, every, he's in charge of the whole film. Whatever you see, he's approved. Oh, does, he, the, the respect I have for him, he's, you look at, pick out any movie. You can't pick out a scene and right. say he's not on his A game. Mm -hmm. He's not connected. Mm -hmm. People don't that, remember July 4th. Flawless. What was that? Uh, yeah, Born on the 4th of July. Born on the 4th yes. of July, yeah. which yeah. Oliver Stone yeah. directed. That's correct, and, yeah. And I, and... It's an it's wonderful. Yeah, and it was yeah. when he really was learning to. What's your favorite Tom Cruise film? Ooh, if um, you had to choose one. If I had to choose one, oh, that's. Um, oh, I, 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 it's a meaningless game. Come on, what kind uh, of? Hey, uh, hey. Okay, it's yours. Let right. me do You're it. Right. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I apologize. I'm allowed. I apologize, but I want to. I want to be asked to. <laughs> okay. I, I like. I like the general type of characters that he goes for. Yes. You yeah. Know? It's it, like, it, you know, trying to be one's best self. Tropic Fighting Thunder. Fighting against the machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tropic I, Thunder. Well, I remember no, when no one even knows he's in it. They go, Tom Cruise is in Tropic yeah. Thunder. Well, I'll tell you what I think is the what I really loved. And it's not my favorite. It is absolutely not my favorite. But when he did Magnolia and he let us see him in yeah. an unattractive light, that was yeah. like a big shift in terms of how I think I saw him because he didn't have to be. He is not the hero in that movie. He was very attractive yeah. and in Tropic Thunder. He was attractive. <laughs> and sexy and he could dance. I know. <laughs> Did you see Tropic? Oh, I loved it. Even yeah. his arms. Oh, like, I know, the furry. Yeah, furry, furry big oh, arms. Furry. Oh, my arms. <laughs> yeah. furry. I didn't know it was him when I first saw I the didn't movie. Either. It was I watched miraculous. the movie. I cracked up and then some, I think it was my brother said to me like, oh, Tom Cruise was hilarious, wasn't he? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> where was he? I had to rewatch it again. And then of course, when you know it's him, and that intensity on that Zoom call yeah. that they have yeah, when he's yeah, like, get yeah, the yeah. fuck out. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> You realize that, uh, yeah, that's that he's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, yeah. I think our will, you know, as an actor, when you're willing, especially if you're a person who generally plays super charming characters, to allow the world to see you as someone who is not so attractive, who yeah. is portraying something that is actually maybe repulsive, yeah. is a big, I think it's a big growth. Charlize step. their own yes, monster. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I think, I got our Academy Award. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. When I see actors do it, I'm always like, oh, they're they're on that journey, you know, of like, right. oh, I'm gonna allow them to see this instead of just the the beautiful mask. 
Yeah, it's when you're in that place not to give a fuck. It's a great place. Yes, yeah. not to care. give a fuck. It's a great place. But you, but you, <laughs> and I say, not giving a fuck. I mean that you're prepared. You know who you are. You're not worried about what other people are thinking or yeah. anything. No insecurities about it. To not give a fuck in that sense. Yes. Yeah. You will. You will give your best work. Oh yeah, you give a fuck that artistically. That's for sure. Yes. You really oh, yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. But about yeah. the opinions of you know, a, yeah, a public. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, that's where like I strive to be. Mm -hmm. like, will Smith. Uh, I don't know. If I, I I'm not sure. But it's a funny story, you know. So he he just wants to please and make everyone happy, you know. Yeah. And he's on Hancock, the movie Hancock. He's a superhero with Charlize yeah. Theron, you yeah. know. And they have a dinner scene, right? You know. And I keep saying, Will, when are you going? You just have to ruin a take once in a while to just for yourself. Yeah. That you don't give a fuck because you give a fuck too much. You never be the greatest actor until you stop giving a fuck. Oh, okay. He said, <laughs> he's, "Okay, I'm going to try to do it now." You know, when he gets on, they're doing a dinner scene. They're having dinner. They're eating spaghetti and meatballs, and Charlie's is serving mm -hmm. dinner, and it's a cute family scene. You know, family with the kid. Yeah. And he starts farting. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> for real? <laughs> Loud, huge farts and it's, it's not in the scene you know he's decided to let it rip that's awesome <laughs> and charlie's it was so great it's not in the film of course it's in the outtake yeah, yeah. she she first she's trying to work with it <laughs> <laughs> and, and and he goes i'm sorry i'm i'm sorry you know i'm sorry you know he's, he's, they're all sorry about the, the that. camera's sorry. still rolling yeah. oh i'm sure everyone was cracking up and, and then finally they tried again the second take another take and now he's farting worse. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. <laughs> and she goes, what the fuck is going you know, Totally out of with a little kid. You know? What the hell's going on here? You know? Yeah. No, that's hilarious. Yeah. No, and bringing that levity on set as well is 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 good. It's good yeah. energy for everybody. And Hancock's you know? a comedy. We don't, I don't know. forget, it's like entertainment. We don't have to be so serious all the yeah. time, yeah. you know? No, it was great. It yeah. loosened everyone up. <laughs> yeah, loosening up is good. And, yeah. and it was a great scene. And, of course, you're not going to see that in the scene. And and uh, it changed him. Yeah. He started to apologize. I just want to apologize from the bottom of my heart. And it was bullshit, whatever. But, you know, yeah. it was the, I, I, I it remember was roaring. One I remember one time I got a, um, I, I had a, I think it, it was, yeah, it was a director on set. And it was early on. And it was like, um, we finished a take. And it's like, Kevin. I never know what you're going to do next. And I said, thank you. Mm -hmm. And they said, that wasn't a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. So I said, great. I'm taking it as a compliment. Uh, yes. That's, <laughs> That's actually, where, that went That's to where the I want to be. Yes. That's the goal. Oh, good. Yes. Like, oh, the, and yeah, that was the best compliment I've ever got in my life That's, as an actor. Yeah, what should you do? The same thing every take? What, are we exactly. kidding? Yeah. Oh, that's really wonderful. And it's like, it's an interesting thing on like, you know, the, the look, you do the blocking and you hit your mark and they set it for lighting and all of that stuff. That's fine. I'm not talking about like wandering off your marks of and wandering out of your mm -hmm. light or frame. No. It's like emotionally, um, you know, or in a blocking rehearsal, mm -hmm. you know, that's to explore that. But if you have a good idea, and that did, I actually do want to talk about this, about Go hitting ahead. your mark, because it was something that we never... You don't study that. No. You know, that's not in, you go to acting school and, you know, you, you're, you're taught how to act. But no one teaches you how to hit your mark. So you turn up on set. And it took me, like, quite a while. Because all these terms and different things when you start acting, you don't fucking know. <laughs> hit your mark. Mm -hmm. What do you mean hit, hit my mark? Um, so you go on, on, on set and you, and you do all these things. But it's like you've got to explore different things and... All of that and eventually you get to learn but like it was i remember i had a do you want to first tell a lot of people don't know what it means you oh hitting your mark yeah. okay so they'll put a little mark on the ground with a sticker when you after you do a rehearsal um and everything is like okay that's where we want the actors to land that's how we want the flow of the scene the movement of the scene they'll mark out and track you and that is so that the lighting guys can light so it's there camera knows where you're at 
and They'll focal points. Lenses, yeah, focal points and sound. So the boom up knows where to come in and all of that aspect. Yeah. The great collaboration. Yeah. Yes, that's the circus coming right. together. You right. know, um, so that's hitting your mark. And and nobody teaches this of what hitting the mark is. So it's very important if you do not do that, you'll be out of focus. You won't be lit right, and they won't have sound right on you. Um, and I learned that later on, and it's like, you know, I had um, a grip said it to me. You know, he taught me. He taught me how to hit a mark, and the or not how to hit the mark, but the importance of the hitting the mark. The importance, yeah. I was, yeah. It's very easy to hit the mark, but the importance of hitting the yeah. mark. Because all you have to do, really, is just look down that's, and hit that's, the mark. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> no one, it'll look good. Some, you know, there's a lot of times they have tracks down. Yes. And you have to, like, walk in between these that's right. like, yeah. train tracks. You and know, you might, like, time your, things. in other words, it's going to take me five steps to get to that mark, right? Yeah. Like, the just the process of doing that. But, yes, what you're talking about is, like, there are technical aspects that you must respect if you're going to show up. Yeah, I mean, even uh, what's the moment before, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of the time I'll have movements coming into a scene because I just think it's very, like, there's life before the scene starts, you know? So it's like, uh, how did you end up on the mark? Where, where are you coming from and yeah. all of that? Um, so I'll, I'll get that movement and you'll just make sure your pacing's right, that, you know, you'll, you'll know that space, mm -hmm. you know? Spencer Tracy, who was one of the great actors of his time, yeah. 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, he is literally one of the greats, James Cagney, Spencer Tracy. So he said in interviews, he said, it's not a big problem, he said. You just put your head down as you're moving, and when you see the mark, you stop and look up to the camera, and yeah. you'll see him do it. Oh, I've watched enough of his film. You, and he, what he does, he makes it look like he's thinking. Yeah. So he has his head down, he's thinking. I know, I've seen him do it in, in Inherit the Wind. Right, that's it. And then yeah. he stops, and he looks up, yeah. and it's very effective. It is. Because then you think he was bringing that something. I'm going to do it now. It's like <laughs> that's what, that's right. And then he hits it. That's what he does. <laughs> no, he does that. See how he he does. does, yes, that's right. And, he's, and he talked about that yeah. in interviews, how he, he said, that's all you got to do. It's, yeah, that's you know, and then he said, "Tell the truth." Yeah. Yeah. When you look up, tell the truth. He said. Yeah. Oh, that's the. I think that's the more difficult part. That I is. think usually, I I I try and avoid it because it, that will take me out of my head. But there is like certain things, like you know, if I know the TV's here at the corner, the line of that, where you know, peripheral is a great thing for that. And and you know, as actors, yes. we, we should know space awareness. And, mm -hmm. That's and right. Have that. So like, you'll and you're feel a dancer, which you already yeah. have powerful yeah. peripheral vision and awareness. Yeah, and you know how close you are supposed to be to the other actors as well. Yeah. Yes, right. Use that. Let let them find their mark. <laughs> I'll just go have you. You're my mark. You right. know? <laughs> yeah. Like, Wait. Yeah. You're not on your mark. Well, fuck you. Adjust. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so funny in Ireland because we're, we'll be shooting these scenes and. You know, next thing, like, you know, they'll put like a stick down, you know. Oh, do they put yeah, a stick? Yeah. And it's like, that's your mark, you know. Wind comes in, whew, oh, sticks, yeah, sticks gone. gone yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but I think they're they're using like chalk and stuff now yeah. and different things. But yeah, the wind will just come in and blow the leaf away. 100%. <laughs> that's what it's I did want to internet. say something, though. Yeah, when yeah, you were talking we about time. Spencer Gold. Tracy, he's, yeah. the, he's the one that um, coined that phrase of sending the elevator back down to artists in respect to no tell me i don't so know. he so he coined his phrase it was sending the elevator back down um and a lot of people use that now and it's 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 in respect to the arts and people studying you know it's you reach a point in your career and you've got to send it down and help the artists underneath you right oh, and yeah. i think that's yes. very relevant yes. as to what's going on and what we were talking about earlier with the strikes and yes he was a uh, very so active around. union even though he was a star yeah. he mm -hmm. supported the union you know, very actively. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. Send the elevator back down. Yeah. Yeah. Also a nice thing to do. It's, uh, it's, it's it wonderful. Is. Just in general, though, not just in the arts, but in general to, to send the elevator back down to to look at yourself not as um, like you did it all on your own because nobody does it on their own. No. No, we stand on the people, on the generations before us, on their shoulders. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Well, that was a great chat, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so oh, much. What a great show. <laughs> I, I can't tell what, it, what a joy it is to have all these. I've been having these wonderful people, and they're so 
they have all different ideas that they bring to it and their processes are different yeah. and the same. Isn't that, I mean, do you know what I mean? They, I know exactly what you their, mean because you, whether you study Stanislavski or Meisner or whatever take it is, or um, method it is, you take that and you're going to go through your own body, mind, mm -hmm. soul and come out with your own technique. See, this is great. You get the yeah. guidelines of, of what a technique is. Mm -hmm. I agree. But you're the one that has to be connected. You have to be the master you know? of your own technique. Yeah. And I remember talking to you before when um, I was like, well, what technique is this? And it's like Stanislavski. But it's within that, it's Aaron's. Te Aaron is the technique. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's Spizer. It's the mm -hmm. Spizer technique. That's right. You know, and then what I'm doing is my version of that. I take everything I can and, and do that. That's right. And if you ever became a teacher, it would be your technique. Yeah. It, it would be the Ryan technique. Yeah. It would, I mean, it has to be. Yeah. It, teaching's an art too. Yeah. 100% it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Aston technique. Those who can't. Oh, I was, wait, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those who can do, those who can't. Teach those who can't teach, teach, teach Jim, and those who can't teach Jim, teach acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're Th doing good. Thanks for having me on no, the show, it's guys. A pleasure. <laughs> oh, thank it's you. Such a joy. Thank you. Oh, I love yeah. you. Love you both so much. Yeah, it's thank really you. thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Awesome. That was some fun chat. <laughs>